Good morning, and welcome to St. Mother Theodore Guerin Parish. Today is the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. As we come together and celebrate the Eucharist, let us turn to our neighbor and say hello. Today's celebrant is Deacon, or sorry, is Bishop Grob, and our deacon is Deacon Mike. Our gathering song will be All Our Welcome, found in your Mother Garen's songbook, number 44. Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It's a, it's a busy Sunday morning, I think. Welcome to the Scouts, the beginning of Catholic Schools Week, Children's Liturgy of the Word, the appearance of our image statue of St. Anthony the Abbot, and the community of people that uh, originate from that part of Italy. We've got a full Sunday morning. But we gather as people of faith, and we hear the unfolding, the continued unfolding of Jesus' ministry. It's early on in the Gospel of Mark, and Jesus is already laying out the plan for salvation that includes you and me. And so I invite you to pause then as we begin, conscious that our God is a God of mercy and a God of healing. Let us ask the Lord for pardon and for peace. You have come to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have come to save sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heaven. 
heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of the will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth be to people of good the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth be to people of good. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so at this time, I would invite those who are going to participate in the children's liturgy of the word to come forward. Ms. McGuire is going to lead those individuals. So if you want to participate, usually it's children, but if you feel you have a child's heart this morning, you're welcome to come up. She's a nice lady, so don't be afraid. I've, I've known Ms. McGuire for a very long time, and most of you have too. <laughs> they are. They're Catholic. It takes you. <laughs> They're in time for the gospel. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Hey, there's the choir. Who the choir? <laughs> That's it. Here comes this. So welcome, everyone. And so before we send you on your way, we ask Almighty God to send down his blessings upon you. And of all of the wonderful things that Miss McGuire is going to tell you, always remember one thing, that God loves you very, very much. And with that in mind, we send you on your way with his blessing, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Good to see you. Are you okay? Come all the children. Listen to the word of God. Come all the children. Listen to the word of God. Thanks for being in the choir. Come all the children. Listen to the word of God. Come all the children. Listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. 
And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm response will be, If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
on the pathway to our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. The evangelist Mark illustrates for us and to us that Jesus wastes no time in launching into his ministry. Clearly for the evangelist Mark, much more so than the writings of Matthew and Luke, Mark cuts to the chase. And there's a clear sense for the Jesus that Mark portrays, there's an urgency about what needs to be done. Prior to the passage that we just heard Deacon Mike read, we heard already Jesus, I mean that Mark recounted the preaching of John the Baptist, Jesus' own baptism, the temptation of Jesus in the desert, and the call of the first disciples, and we're only halfway through the first chapter. It's kind of like there's a very quick pace about what's going on. And then there's today's gospel. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked the demonic spirit, the unclean spirit, and he leaves the man. And everybody's standing there mystified. What is this? A new teaching with authority. Truth be told, Jesus will provide many new teachings as his ministry unfolds in the following chapters. Among them, oh, among them, he will address a deception. He will address the deception that we cannot make a difference in life. And there is a common enough belief that can come from either one's own self-doubt or in this case from the devil himself that I cannot or you cannot make a difference in the world. And that's a lie. There's a true story told about Kathy and Larry. Larry was one of those guys who, although he lived in the Midwest, he hated the weather, like a lot of us, I suppose. 
And his annual project each year would be to save up as many vacation days as he could. Gather them all together, and then maybe mid, late January, February, find a destination somewhere warm, ideally in the Caribbean, if he had enough money saved up and a block of hours in which to do it. This particular year was no different than all of the other years. He had saved up 10 whole days and he had found a spot in the Caribbean where he had reserved his flight to and away he went because truth be told there is nothing that Larry enjoyed more in life than to get up early, early, early in the morning and before even the sun was coming up and walk along the beach just to greet a new day the warm sand under his feet and walk along the water that's what transpired that particular year arrived first morning up before dawn out on the beach in the Caribbean walking along the water in the distance he saw something and he wasn't quite sure what it was because it was that dusky time, if you will, before the sun comes up and you see shadows. You don't see clearly. What Larry saw was something like this. And on down the beach. Well, curiosity got the best of him, so he sped up. He caught up to Kathy. She was 12. There were starfish lining the beach. What Kathy was doing was scooping them up and dropping them back in the water. We know the lifespan of a starfish outside water, huh? It's not going to last long. Larry introduces himself. Hi, I'm Larry. Hi, I'm Kathy. What are you doing? What, what, what? Because as Larry looked on the beach, there were tons of starfish, whatever had happened. There were all these starfish that had washed up on the beach. What are you doing, Kathy? There are so many. What difference does it make? Child, wise beyond her years, without missing a beat. She bent down one more time, and she picked up one of the starfish, and before dropping it into the water, she turned to Larry and she said, it makes a difference to this one. True story. Story taken from life. To make a difference for the good or the bad, we all have that potential, don't we? On Friday night, I had the great privilege of having dinner with um, the Latin patriarch of Jerusalem, Cardinal Pizzabella. Pizzabella. And he was in just for two days because he was meeting with Arab Christians in the Chicago Ridge area yesterday, and he was flying back to Jerusalem this morning. He's been living in the thick of everything that has been going on in the Holy Land, in the Gaza Strip. This man, in the early days of the war, offered himself in exchange for prisoners. What difference does one life make? They refused to take him up on the offer. And yet, other people inspired by his selfless act rolled up their sleeves and got busy to work for peace in their own way, in their own place, wherever they were living. Everyone has the potential to make a difference, you and I. 
And there's that awful discouragement that can come, talking heads, whoever they may be, sometimes they come within ourselves because we've been told that again and again in our lives, saying, what difference are you going to make? You're not going to amount to anything. Of course, that's a lie. There are other talking heads that can come from outside us and say, what difference are you going to make? The problem is too big. Just think of Kathy. It certainly did make a difference to that one starfish. That wasn't even a human being. Are you willing to overcome the talking heads that try to discredit and put aside our potential, yours and mine, to change the world? Are we going to change it in its entirety? With all due respect, probably not. Let's be realistic. But yet you have people like Cardinal Pizzavala who tried at least for a whole band of hostages, captives. What difference can I make in my own family? Usually that's the best place to start because more times than that, that's where some of the greatest healing is needed. To change lives, to heal old wounds, to set old stuff down, to move forward in healthy ways or within the workplace, or the school place, or within the neighborhood, to those we know, to those we don't know, the stranger. So many immigrants, so many people living on the streets. In the Gaza Strip right now, 85% of the homes are completely destroyed and people have not a roof over their head and they're literally living on the streets. We've got some of the same problems here. Don't be confounded by the lie that we can't make a difference, you and I, because we can. In whatever way, we can. In whatever way we decide to put our hand to, we can try. And that's exactly what the Lord came to teach us to do by His truth and the goodness of humankind redeemed. We have the ability, you and I, and it's our turn now. Can't wait for the next generation. We're living right now. And it's ours to make a difference. We have the luxury, the blessing of a Catholic school. Teachers, school staff, principal that are making a difference in the lives of children. I laud them. School parents who are making the sacrifice to spend where it could have been so much easier to go to a public school. A sacrifice. I laud you as well. We do it all, they do it all, you do it all because we believe we can make a difference in this generation and the next. Yes, we can. It makes a difference to this one. Whatever or whichever this one is. Huh? Let's ask the Lord to keep us strong in our determination to bring good into the world instead of darkness. visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true, true God. God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, that's one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. Trusting that the Lord hears us in all our needs, we give voice to our petitions. For all members of God's holy church, may the Lord speak clearly to our hearts the words of love he wishes all to hear. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For lawmakers, may the Holy Spirit guide them in protecting and aiding the most vulnerable, especially the elderly and the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For refugees, those in exile, and all those displaced from their home, may the mercy of God give them comfort and rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered here, May we be given courage to act on the words of God spoken in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those being baptized into our faith community, Gabriel Isaac Rodriguez, Jacob Angel Santana, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, especially those listed in our parish bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, Ellen Gazda, Mary Krasik, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions for which this Mass is offered, Frank Pudlow, Roman and Anna Romanyak, A.J. Joe Corbett, birthday, Joe Guidi, Max Enrique, Gina McLynn, birthday, Elena Suarez, Virginia Grismala, Gloria Guidi, Valerie Bacchus, Mary Guidi O'Malley, the Friends of the Society of St. Anthony the Abbot. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of time and eternity, you call us to holiness of life. Help us to remove the obstacles that block us from hearing your voice and from serving you in love. We make this in all our prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And our second collection this morning is taken off on behalf of the church in Latin America. Our presentation hymn will be Let Us Go to the Altar of God, found in your journey book, Number 767.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of, your, of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might be the means of our salvation. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, now join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Archbishop, me, your unworthy servant, and all your clergy and people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, including Mother Theodore Guerin, Celestine, Cyprian, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this, your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us share some sign of peace with one another. Good to be working again. It's nice to do this again. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who came to take away the sin of the world. Happy are those of us to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof. Only say the word of my soul. For those participating in today's liturgy via the live stream, please bow your heads as I read the act of spiritual communion. <clears throat> My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
seated. Thank you, guys. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello and good morning. My name is Joanna Giannis, and I am a parent of two children at St. Celestine's. I would like to thank Father Paul and Mrs. Click for giving me the opportunity to speak at Mass. Today marks the beginning of Catholic Schools Week. This is an exciting time for our children as it provides an opportunity to share successes and celebrate growth. I reflect on how just two and a half years ago I was looking to rejoin the workforce. I was eager to find a school to ensure my children and my husband would transition well with major changes. As a mother, I needed peace of mind by selecting an environment that would set my children up for success and offer a high quality and balanced education. I was in search of a school with administration and staff who would serve as role models with strong moral values. My children's safety was of the utmost importance. Overall, a vibrant school at the intersection of faith and education. St. Celestine's allows children to develop a sense of community with their fellow classmates. Opportunities for fellowship, friendship, and service are abundant creating a warm and welcoming environment. For those who don't have a family in the area, this is especially important as this church and school becomes a meaningful central location. Each student here is viewed as an individual with unique qualities. The children are taught self-respect and respect for others. The children are educated on how to be productive members of society. They receive their sacraments alongside their education. This combined curriculum in turn creates purpose. Technology is used effectively as a tool to enhance their education. Our children are enriched through art, music, Spanish, physical education, which develops a well-rounded person. St. Celestine's partners with families to achieve success together by cultivating open lines of communication and welcoming parental involvement. I can also share with confidence that St. Celestine's tuition is also much more affordable in comparison to neighborhood schools, as well as offering before care and after care for working parents. The, dedicated, the dedication of staff, faculty, parents, grandparents, and community members is inspiring and has motivated me to speak today. I can proudly say that St. Celestine's was the right choice for us. Not only did we survive, we thrived. I encourage students, families to tour school today, speak with teachers, staff, and all of our community members. We welcome you to attend our open house after this mass and see the many achievements that we are all proud of. I am just one of the many great experiences. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Joanna. And in a special way, I ask your kindness to pray for our Catholic schools um, throughout the Archdiocese. Uh, I serve as the Episcopal Vicar for Vicariate 1, which is the northern part of the Archdiocese of Chicago. And in my Vicariate, there are 30 schools. So much to be proud of. Um, and here at St. Celestine, um, the St. Celestine School has been in existence and wonderfully educating children for a long time, so please keep the school, its principal, the teachers, staff in your prayers, not only this week, but please throughout the year. I think we have some other announcements. Join us for Holy Hour on Friday, February 2nd at 3 o'clock p.m. in St. Celestine's Church. Please bring your palms to either church on February 2nd and 3rd or 9th and 10th so they can be burned for ashes for Ash Wednesday. 
I also want to thank all who are here representing or involved in scouts and scouting. Again, something that's been a long-standing tradition here um, in the parish when it was first St. Celestine's and now in the combined St. Celestine, St. Cyprian, St. Mother Theodore Guerin Parish. Um, so thank you for all who sacrifice and are involved in scouting because it's a very important piece and part of this particular parish community, so thank you. Uh, lastly, um, as you know, there's a, a new face standing in the sanctuary, and it's not Deacon Mike or myself. It's the image of uh, St. Anthony of St. Anthony the Abbot or St. Anthony of Egypt. Um, he died in the year 356 and uh, is known as the father of monasticism, of monastic life. Um, the rest of the year he spends his time elsewhere in the church, but his feast day is January 17th, so he makes his way up front um, for a few days just to show us that he's still around. Uh, but also in a special way, the members of the Society of St. Anthony uh, the Abbot um, support um, his veneration and in fact they hail the original members, some of the members hail from the small town of Ataleta uh, in Abruzzo in, in Italy and um, so they come uh, each year as we celebrate St. Anthony uh, the abbot and also they're responsible for us to have the statue here an image of St. Anthony so in a special way we welcome the Society of St. Anthony the Abbot, so thank you for being here. I think I've covered everything. If not, you can get a refund at the door. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless each of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Now let us go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join us in our closing hymn, Lead Me, Lord, found in your journey songbook number 733.